Welcome everyone to the Master Vox where we have Psilocybin playing as Fajukina and Red Bull playing as First Ski Jaeger. With me we have Nilla. Hello. I wish I had some psilocybin in me right now. Ooh, psilocybin. Hmm. Talk about uh, you know, just one last trip on the magic carpet. Well, I do think uh psilocybin is on something because the su 85s and the ba 10s are on attack move orders not move attack orders so they're just driving through the field uh, i think that might have been just a little bit of a micro mistake just a little yeah, bit or, or it could be the voices you know do you hear the voices too <laughs> <laughs> i see dead people <laughs> At this point, the, the, the voices in the walls to uh, psilocybin are telling him to attack move and not quick move, to include that BA-10. <laughs> so, with uh, Fedukina uh, being played, what's your opinion on that? Have you played that really at all in 1v1, 7v10s? Because there was a, a little while while um, I was testing out V for Victory, I was just playing Fedukina just constantly because it's not good with that income, and it's, it's kind of hard deck in general, and it's a ton of fun, though. So I really like the uh, the Strelke DTs because they have Molotovs, and you know me, I'm a whore for knife fighting. Uh, but Fedukina also allows you to deal with any of the big kitty cats, and a lot of people aren't ready for that. Especially when you start bringing out the, what is it, one card, Abyss 100s, and B-Phase, you get four of them, and they just wreck anything at 2k. So somehow, out of nowhere, the Soviets can now deal with big kitty cats. <clears throat> Yeah, and they also get 152, so they got really good fire support, and if you hit something with that 152, it's going to do a pretty good amount of damage. Very true. And uh, one thing I normally don't like to see is mortars as an opening play, but these two 82mm mortars are just hitting away at these uh, Ski Jaeger MG42s. But it's interesting that he doesn't know they're there technically because he has no recon or infantry to look at them. <laughs> he he had a sniper there who got mowed down by those two machine guns. Uh, that makes sense. And it's interesting to that mortar point, both sides are using just non-radio 82mm mortars. You don't see that a ton, or at least I didn't when I played a lot. I mean, it's still not a very common thing in all aspects. I mean, 82, 81 and 82mm mortars still allow you to have that infantry support and to put smoke down but the, yeah the radio 82 millimeter mortars are what people normally go towards yeah it's kind of the issue that you have in war game is when your mortar runs out of ammo it's not cost efficient to resupply it so if only the 82s and 81s got more ammo in the game they might be a little bit more useful yeah but i think eugen is thinking about that poor soviet conscript that's lugging around uh 40 rounds of ammunition between the three of them. So I guess in a in a sense, they're trying to keep that realism going and not fuck that up. But at the same time, since, in the game aspect, I understand where you're coming from. I mean, since when, when was Eugen ever good with labor relations? <sighs> uh, they take enough vacations. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Just they don't get paid. <laughs> See, digitally they give a shit and they try to make the, the labor relations good. In real life, they just, they're just not working. <laughs> <sighs> Alright, now, I'm going to point out that Fejukina will keep this top area pretty easily with those three, off or two Optimum Machikis and that Stroke DT. Wait, that Stroke DT gets two LMGs and that's what? Oh, that must have been a buff. I don't remember them having two LMGs. I thought they only had one. Yeah, they got two LMGs, four SVT-40s, three PPSHs. So they're actually really good at... Um, I'd say they're still really just a knife fighting unit that can have an LMG. Yeah, I mean, they're good defensive now with two LMGs. But right here, this is not what you want. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, psilocybin is just getting mowed down by some wings right now. Red Bull's definitely rocking the two wings with the two veteran Sambo Ski Jaegers, and that's exactly what you want to see here with the half tracks too. Really good setup here by um, Red Bull. If Red Bull realizes what's really going on here, they can definitely exploit this and take that top hill pretty quickly. Yeah, so one thing you taught me to do was actually just to use the half tracks as an MG42. Just yep. up that um, you use them as uh, infantry support, and it works really well, especially if you look at the fact that the Ski Jaeger Pioneer Fuhrer 
or Skinny Ray Jaeger Fuhrer has a sniper rifle and ten fucking people, it is a thick boy leader squad. It is, and what you could do too is take the Ski Jaeger, throw him back in the half track, and then go dump them off right in front of the tree line and assault it. So instead of having to run through the field, give time for a bomber or artillery to hit you. Because it looks like Sil Sidemen is going heavy into the artillery. Even though it's all light artillery, there's a lot of it out in the field already. Yeah, he's really setting up his support equipment really early and giving up what could have been a one tick because that Ski Jaeger Pioneer is literally unopposed. That SU-85 is holding his entire front. Yeah, and then on top of that as well, Ski Jaeger's got a really good artillery part for counter battery. Because he gets two cards of the Double Warfers, uh, 41s, yeah. and those are really, really good at taking out artillery if you bring them pretty close to the front. We already see an A Phase 1 with a supply half track coming out. So both sides are going to settle into artillery pretty early on, and it's probably an attempt by both players to try to get some positional advantage and try to get somebody to make a bad financial decision in terms of artillery investment as the game goes on because they're both balanced very true but i think that we're going to see a major push up here with red bull in the north he's got his ski Jaeger pioneers that are going to start pushing across he's got the kv2 oh oh god it's so beautiful the refrigerator on a kv with a 152 oh we'll see that in c phase because that'll be about the time it gets up to the front line with how slow it is hey this isn't me playing 15 scots with the churchills it will eventually get there okay <laughs> And, someday yeah someday and that t 3485 is actually in a really good position to be able to cut off any reinforcements from psilocybin yeah good positioning there with that t 3485 and in a straight up fight since it has one bet on it it should doesn't mean it will but it should beat the su-85 very true but the su-85 isn't going to have eyes on compared to the ski few oh wait the fusilier is not in a good spot either it's just a shit show to see who gets that first shot then Oh, yeah, what I think that, we'll see it do is that KB2 come up and push the edge a little bit in that fight between the two when that happens. Yeah, right now I'm watching a M42 gun tickle a Martyr 3 to death with APCR. It was painful to watch. <laughs> <laughs> um, if death you, by a thousand cuts. No, that's what it is, though. But the M42 gun with the APCR allows you to penetrate things that shouldn't even be able to penetrate like um that t-34s or other medium armor but now that it's down to its normal ap shell which is what 75 millimeters of armor it's going to go through panzer fours it's going to go through panzer threes but it's not going through anything else yeah it's a good ambush weapon yeah it's about all it's really good for one one interesting thing to me is you don't normally see this but if you look down south you can see psilocybin has honestly listened to the voices in the walls and he has two MCHAs, an SU-85, and a Strelke. And what I uh, imagine is him trying to push the south. You don't normally see people push the south in this map on SEAL. No, you don't. And if we see Red Bull realize what's there and call out a cluster bomber, it's going to pay for itself in one run. But instead, they're choosing to shell it with the mortar. They don't know that there's no A. We have God Vision there. But yeah. considering you've seen so many tanks called out in A phase and you have artillery hitting you, it's a good chance that there is an AA. And then if you fly that plane out and there is AA, there's a good chance that your opponent's really weak somewhere. Yeah, because right now it looks like Psilocybin only has that one AA in the center. But that one AA in the center is, again, holding that entire line back against these T-3485s and Stromsky Jaegas. Yeah, if that uh, sniper recon squad moved up, they would be able to spot that AA piece and take it out. Oh, yeah, they could. Oh, we have a BA-10 engaging on the center hill, on the northern hill. Wait. He has no AT up here on this hill. What? Nope. He has the Panzer Shrek. Oh, fair yeah. play. It's the one AT. But up north, we can see the T-34 and the KB-2 going into action. The SU-85 is going to spot the T-34 first, and it's in APCR range, and it gets a crit. But since that's just a crit, it's going to take a little bit more to kill the t 3485 and the t 3485 misses its first shot so it looks like yep su-85 is going to take that one away actually it's four it's damage shots. uh yeah it would be three shots it should be oh oh yeah, but he's in the kv yep Ooh. that's gonna be a big win here for psilocybin if this kv misses nope kv nope. hits 
with the caster curse right there. <laughs> the KV always hits. I remember I played a game where one KV killed so much of my armor. I'm just like, why won't you miss? It's got good armor, too. Like, it's deceptive. Because yeah, you look at it, you're like, oh, that's the funny tank from War Thunder. And it's like, oh, yeah, it's actually really good, too. Yeah, the 110 front armor, if you're playing anything that doesn't have dedicated AT, so if you're playing something that relies on, like, medium AT, so a ZIS-3, ZIS-2s ZIS can penetrate it with the APCR. Um, I wouldn't be, want to be that close if I'm the ZIS-2. No, but that's the thing. Like, remember I was talking to you about, like, why I like um, KV-1s and T-3485s if you're playing against, like, Western allies? Because Shermans can't penetrate these things. Yeah, it's a tough nut to crack. And then looking at the unit model, all of its ammo is stored on the uh, back of the engine deck. <laughs> oh, God, I have to look. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> to be real, the back armor should be zero because of that. Oh, God. the uh, <laughs> All of the rounds are attached right next to the engine. Yep. <laughs> it's a big old suicide bomb. <laughs> That's horrifying. I would hate to be in that tank. Very true. I really like his use of ski fusiliers, though. Like, they're a good knife fighting unit with uh, six MP40s and three G43s. Yeah, he also has down south the Sturm fusilier as well, which is you don't really see those recon units taken a lot. But to your point, the just the normal fusiliers are actually really, really good. Yeah, you can throw those fusiliers in front of or in conjunction with just normal uh, ski Jaeger. And you can push through areas. And it's funny, you can use those recon troops to surrender people if you have either a, a leader near them or a normal infantry unit that will push the line forward. The the recon troops will surrender things. Another thing you can do with those, since they don't push the front line, is set them on one corner of the map and walk across the edge of the map and get on somebody's supply road. They have three AT grenades, so you might get lucky and kill a tank with it, or you... It could, it could be as simple as you gun down a couple of transport trucks and make two infantry squads unload prematurely. Very true. And for the fact they're, what, like 20 point, 25 points for a ski fusilier, any kill will get their points back at that point. So you're trying to be, like, point positive. Yeah, and it, I've done that a couple of times, too, in competitive games. And even in that situation, people usually don't expect it because that's something you have to do in A phase, and it might pay off in the beginning of C phase. Yeah, you're, you're looking towards that long-term investment at that point. Also, all yep. I'm going to say is the north side of Seal is the black leather couch, and we are watching the interview happen, because Jesus Christ, is he getting fucked up north. <laughs> <laughs> it must be his first time, too. <laughs> Trying to make a name for himself. Psilocybin came in looking for the modeling gig and found out what it was really about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Model this cock in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, now the real question is will Red Bull continue this beautiful aggression up north, or is he just gonna sit here? Oh, wait, the Pack 40 is gonna kill off the T 3045, and then he'll be yeah. able to see there's nothing behind it. So far, Psilocybin's done a really good job of trading with tanks. The T 34s have gone down up north, the KV 1 went down up north, and there was a T 3045 down south that went down. To the su-85 the trade down south wasn't as uh, lopsided as two the the two amateurs are dead yeah. but that su-85 is still commanding that road i didn't realize this but if you look at the center psilocybin has done a great job outflanking the push from red bull yeah done a really good job of maneuvering on red bull and the only issue is if that strokey dt was a standard strokey they would be able to snipe that t-34-85 oh yeah with the rgb grenade or whatever it is yeah RGB light grenade. <laughs> what? What? what oh wait, the Optimachiki has it. RPG forty three grenade. Okay. There you go. Okay. Shh. In my head, RPGs are like the thing people in pajamas scream "Alu Akbar" at and shoot at American helicopters. Not a not a hand grenade. That's what the competition uses. <laughs> That's how we know they're the B team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this JU-87 is going to kill off this ISU-152, and it's going to open up the entire north. Yeah, uh, it might be aiming a little too far back unless... Oh. Well, it's got a good spread, remember. Nope. It's backing into it. Yep, I would have gotten it either way. God, there's so many casting couch jokes I can make off of that. <laughs> 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 Ooh. 
But yeah, it looks like they're... That, yeah, that big spread made a big gaping hole in the front line up north. It did. It did. It just backed up into it properly. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> What's going to be funny is these Sturmski Jaeger could actually get up towards this Emcha and kill it off with that Panzerfaust, but it looks like he might throw the Ski Fusiliers at it to throw that anti-tank grenade. Yeah, the Panzerfaust is better there because of the range on it, but uh, I don't see anybody with Panzerfaust over there. The uh, the Sturm Ski Jaeger has the uh, the nine MP44s, the Sturmgewehr, and one anti tank grenade. Or no, oh, it has oh, anti tanks. Oh, yeah, yeah, no Panzerfaust up there, so they'd have to just yellow it, two of them at a time, running at it. Yeah, to Valhalla at that point, Jesus. Yeah, witness me. But at the same time, there's no infantry for the Emtra to spot, or to use to spot, so, I mean, honestly, just doing the, the bonsai charge at the Emtra might actually be the best move here. Yeah, and you, one thing you mentioned is Psilocybin did a good job of flanking in the middle, but Red Bull's done a really good job of counterattacking here. And one thing so far that I've noticed is Red Bull's been better at positioning units than Psilocybin has. Yeah. Psilocybin's let stuff get uh, caught out in the open, and be a little bit out of position while red bull has been really taking more you know standard positions that you would see yeah um, i think red, red bull is take. doing that yeah red bull is doing a very standard and slow grind and i think psilocybin oh my god those sturm ski acres just ripped these things apart <laughs> jesus christ sturm -Gavaz. But 1.2, uh, a nice little area down south, the SU-85 that Psilocybin has there has a really good line of sight. It's got a little bit of a line of sight there on the bridge um, that uh, Red Bull has to cross to get over there. And that T-3045 is in a good spot there as well, since there's no AT down there. There's really no risk for either one of them. And they would see AT moving forward because they're so far forward and control both roads. Yeah, uh, the problem he's going to run into is the fact that he doesn't. he might not have recon because the stroke he can't see down there where they're at. So, mm -hmm. for psilocybin, all you gotta do is put, like, a recon unit around that T-34 or 85, or move the infantry into that little patch of grass in front of it, to where you'd be able to have that line of sight, because tank, um, line of sight in this is absolute shit. Optics very low. One interesting thing that's going on up north is Red Bull's pulling his forces back and not occupying the town. Interesting. interesting yeah, interesting move there. Is he trying to, like, bring them in to grind them down to bring them in to grind them down? Or do you think this is just him being way too cautious? I think he's being too cautious here. He's probably fearing the nuclear bomber that Fedukina gets. But that doesn't show its head until at least B phase. And most people probably bring that out in C phase just because it's low uh, low availability and really high cost. So you probably want two of them in case you lose one. Very true, but it's always funny when you bring out the 1k bomber in A phase and just fucking plaster an area that no one's expecting. Oh, it's the it's like an off map, because if you bring it out with the first point tick, nobody has AA, and if it's in an area like the flank forest on Orsha East, you can just clear out that forest with it. Yeah, it, it works wonders. It, like you, The thing you have to worry about is, do they have AA? By, on the first tick, no one brings AA out unless you're playing against, like, 6th Airborne and then you're, like, trying to not shit your pants hoping to get mosquitoed. <laughs> yeah, the UFOs. Yeah. It's either that. Typhoons. Yeah, the Typhoons, uh, the Mosquito with uh, Napalms, or 3rd Fallstrom Jaeger, you also have to, like, clench your butt cheeks really hard for when they bring out that Napalm plane in A phase. Not even on the first tick, but with their deployment cache. Yeah, my, my one of my favorite tournament games was against Presser John when I napalmed his start because he picked Krupa, and I was like, that's very rude, so I'm going to do something rude back to you. And I killed everything. Did he, like, surrender in, like, a minute? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and he called me an asshole. I mean, you are an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair point. So, Presser John, if you are somehow listening to this, you are right. He is my asshole, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh... And here comes more T-3485s. Psilocybin is seeing visions that infantry support is not needed <laughs> for the tanks. <laughs> the voices in the walls are telling him to send the T-3485s unsupported. Who is he to argue with the voices in the wall? Hey, the voices are just visions from God. <laughs> it doesn't help you have to like take the mushroom to see it, but it's there. 
Yes. You just haven't opened your third eye to understand. Yeah, well, something got opened up north because nothing's moving up there and the points are still ticking from that double tick. But Red Bull has repositioned on the edge of the tree line in a more standard formation there, just covering all approaches. I personally, I would put my ski Sturmjägers in that farm complex on the edge of the hill. Oh, yeah. Because it's, you come over that hill, they're right there. And with those STGs and the grenades, it's really hard to get them out of there. Yeah, if you put uh, any one on either side, and if you have a pack 40 further back, you can pretty much shut this entire flank down and force him to invest in the, the nuke bomber at that point. Yeah, but it's also just continuing to fall apart here for psilocybin. There's no infantry moving into the middle here. They got taken out in, in a firefight by all those Sturmsky Jaeger. The artillery is coming in from those Katushas, but it's too little too late. Yeah, well, one thing I want to point out with Katushas is you can use them as, like, a really light off-map with for one strike, right? So if you think about one of the Russians' divisions has a 76 mil off-map, people look at that like, why would I want it? Well, the reason why you want it is because it forces everything in that circle to get pinned down. So these Katushas may not be actually killing a bunch of shit, but what they're doing is guaranteeing everything gets pinned down, so all you would need to do is send the, the T-34 85s that God has told you to send straight over there to, like, surrender them all. Yeah, but unfortunately, uh, they didn't foresee that the Stu wouldn't give a shit about little two 82mm rockets. Very true. Oh! The Stu is the vessel of Satan. <laughs> this Pac-36 still has its AP rounds turned on. And it's within 750 meter range to like try to uh, totally not Panzer Shrek one of these T-34 85s. Well, the Katusha just went down to number one for fire. And we're seeing the J-87 D-3 take out both these T-34 85s. Yep. Bye bye. Truly, oh wow, that one got super lucky. Truly, the 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 Stug three is not the vessel of Satan, but that Pac-36 holding our brothers and the T-34 85s up from their mission. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the, the Stug was just a fallen angel. <laughs> oh, God, this is the year, too. This is the three 1,000 pounds. What is he bombing? I don't know what he's bombing, but Red Bull knew that it was coming and called out three AA pieces over there. So, Fedjukina gets this bomber and 7th Estonian, right? So, those are the only two that get the three 1,000 pounders? Yes. Okay. Okay. So for this game, for psilocybin, if you are listening to this, it is not in the walls. You, it is on YouTube. Okay, <laughs> um, but stop all... taking your meds. <laughs> Jesus Christ! No, no, no. Um, so when you're doing this, I think you overinvested into artillery and support equipment too soon. So for that, you just need to have that frontline presence, and that would have prolonged the game. Yes but it would have allowed you to counteract the, the Sturmsky Jaeger pushes everywhere. And that, that's my thought on how psilocybin could have improved upon this game. What do you think, Noah? Yeah, so when you're looking at a map like this, and most maps in general, they'll have three lanes, and the way that you kind of want to approach it at first while you're improving your micro and you're understanding the maps and the units is come up with unit compositions. And what I like to do is I'll take three line infantry, whether it be Panzer Grenadiers, Strelke, DPs, or whatnot, a uh, leader, um, a support weapon, and then some kind of anti-tank and pair them together. And then try to think about it on a, you know, a more tactical company size level where you have certain assets that you can move around the field because you can't have an AT gun on every single lane um, at the start, but one lane's going to need it more than the other. So think about it that way, set it up that way, and that's going to give you a continuous front line with a cohesive force that's going to be able to withstand and resist most attacks and then give you time to think and react and deploy other units that weren't a part of that initial deployment that'll solve a problem that you run into. Exactly. So Seal is actually one of my favorite maps. It's the same reason why you love Lanina, Nilla. Mm -hmm. It's because everyone hates it. But I love mm -hmm. it because I get to knife fight so much. So yep. I can tell you on Seal... You have this flank over here between the Pac-40 and the SU-85. I would call this a lane in itself because it's the one everyone ignores. Okay? Yeah. And then you have the hill. So this is a very contested hotspot. So just know if you're ever playing Zeal. Um, Red side has an advantage with the hill because you can get up here 
uh, and then reinforce directly into this point with no problems. And it's harder for blue because blue doesn't have as much of a green forest to go across. Uh, you also, I would consider in the same vein, have this center portion here between the KV-2 and the, the Stroke EDT that are pinned down to never, that just died. That's also part of this main push here because you can set up an AT gun, both sides can, and cut off any reinforcements uh, going through here. I, for this one, I would say you have four lanes almost because then you have this group of trees between the Skirm Steager and the Opto Machiki that have it unloaded. Or that... Um, yeah, it it uh, comes down to like preference too and how you look at the map as well. But the point still really holds is where you want to have a platoon size element um, on whatever you decide the lanes are and what that element should be consisting of. So if you're up north on the casting couch, you're going to want to have more <laughs> close quarter infantry and then maybe a fire support unit to cover that opening where the road is, where the village is, um, coming from the blue side into the red side. And then have your Optima Cheeky, your Tinko Desniki to cover the tree line. Yeah, and then one fun thing to do that no one really sees is to actually push across where that MG42 to the Opto is. Just use some smoke. And then you can completely threaten any reinforcement route if he did push over or if he's attempting to. And you, you can cause a lot of havoc on this map just by doing some dumb shit with smoke. And it's beautiful. Yeah, and as you get more advanced in the game and stuff too, and you're able to use better combined arms tactics and stuff. Yeah, one thing I like to do on this map is when I have that open field there up in the north and I'm attacking the village, I'll take my half tracks, I'll take some tanks for fire support and a mortar for smoke, and I'll do like a cavalry assault into the town with the half tracks and the tanks and try to clear it out that way. And then since I'm so mobile, if I clear the town out, I can just rush into the tree line and just get a huge chunk of territory right off the bat. Yeah, and then one fun thing to know about this map is most people don't really defend like Red Bull did into this um, village here with the Ski Fusilier and the, the Church Tower and where he had originally those two MG42s. So you can mm -hmm. you can probe on this map in a lot of places, um, but a lot of it turns into a grind on the hill and then a grind over at the casting couch. So th those are the two normal hotspots for this map, I would say. So if you do get Zeal, just know that those two areas are going to be an absolute shit show. <laughs> yep. And one thing, too, taking it back to the match overall is Psilocybin's still technically in it. It's a 12-12 now. And a reason that it's at a 12-12 now is Red Bull hasn't put this game away. They didn't secure the town up north. They just secured the trees. Now there's Optima Cheeky trying to take the town or the trees back there. One's holding the flag. Artillery's raining in. And then... There's only two Optos holding the middle there, out of position. They're cover they're shoot looking outside of the tree line instead of sitting back inside of it. It's a lot of opportunities here for Red Bull to put this away by now, but it just hasn't yet. I think a lot of it is just like not being aggressive enough. You know, like you should be able to see, like you've traded really well against psilocybin. If you're Red Bull, you should know that there's going to be a lot of holes in a lot of places. <laughs> Yeah, that, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so one thing for uh, for newer players, right? So I try to to talk and teach things as we play. So where that Opto Machiki is, you can see how it sees the entire middle forest area. If you, if this is your last ditch effort, put it into the trees because it only sees 100 meters. So it has a little pocket of whatever it comes into that pocket, it kills with its PPSHs. Because otherwise, yeah, to that point, it's range on its PPSH is only 100 meters. Yeah, so right now these these Ski Jaeger are just shooting with no return fire. Yep. You know, just slowly whittle them down. I'm honestly surprised that the casting couch is as back and forth as it is. Yeah, I mean, when you let them back onto the couch for <laughs> round two... It's bound to happen. <laughs> he really just opened it back up so we can get around to. Yeah, it's on fire though. So that's not good. No. <laughs> now those lag napalm bombers, are you a fan of napalm bombers in general? Other than the uh, cheesy openings? It, they have to be the really big ones to be worth anything. I don't think those lag ones are any good. They could have changed, but that spread is so small that I don't really like it because you kind of want to use it as like a 
you want to look at it as like an infantry cluster bomber. That makes a good that that makes a lot of sense. Like either an infantry cluster bomber or a support weapon cluster bomber, because the support weapons qu can't run away fast enough. Yep. Yeah. There's no getting away when you're uh, lugging around an IG thirty three and you're on fire. <laughs> I refuse to give this up. <laughs> Come take it, Fed boy. And then you just end up yeah. burning with the uh, IG thirty three. Yeah. You shouldn't have uh, cut your shotgun barrel down to 15.9 inches. Hey, 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 hey. I bought this property on Ruby Ridge and we're keeping it, okay? <laughs> I feel so bad for your dog. <laughs> oh, God. This, all right, this KV-2 is an amazing support weapon and apparently anti-tank weapon, let me say, because we're watching it just completely mow down half Tomachikis. This KV-2 is going to be tried for war crimes because it's committing an Optimachiki genocide. Nah, it's just it's just putting them down. They were lame. They were sick. They just just needed to go. And, and then the Ember Warfare on top of it? Jeez. Oof. That's mean. It's mean-spirited is what that is. Yeah. One thing up north, uh, Psilocybin is using the 152 as direct fire. I would say fire support, there's nothing to support right now. So he was just shooting it into the trees. And that's a really good use of it there. If you know something's in the trees and you want to try to suppress it, you either will suppress it or you're going to um, negate the area that you're trying to push on. So good micro there by Psilocybin to use the 152 in an indirect role. Yeah, it, it denies them the ability to enter into the side of that forest. Now, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, this is a total lack of Red Bull being aggressive at this point. Yeah, it's only one one five two. So, and it doesn't have line of sight. So, if you use the line of sight tool, you can walk into that building there and lob the anti tank grenade on it and take it out with the uh, Sturmsky Jaeger. Not to mention all of the units that are on the main hill after killing wave after wave of Jelki. Oh God, he's throwing another wave of Avtos. This is the third wave of the casting couch at this point. And the B threes, a lot of B threes there. Three B threes. I'm sorry, four B threes. It's all of them. What? What is going on? Okay, Question. so I think that psilocybin may be a bit of a newer player. Just, just taking a guess here. So all mm -hmm. I'm going to say for psilocybin is you don't need to dump all of your B threes in one area because they are a two K range. You can easily spread them along the map. And this might be a panic buy. I don't know what his deck is like for... I can't remember what his deck's like for infantry, but just more infantry, more T-34s, just fire support and just infantry to try to push this out if you're, you're hell-bent on it. And he's doing a good job with his artillery um, when they w did have ammo of supporting <laughs> the infantry pushes. <laughs> a couple of things. One, uh, both of them don't have a ton of infantry for being balanced. Both of them... I have like 72 for Red Bull and 75 for Psilocybin. Mm -hmm. And Red Bull only has infantry in A and B phase. And then um, another thing with those B3s, those are indirect. So Psilocybin could, if they wanted to, use them as artillery, but it looks like they're going to drive up onto the front. Wait, are you telling me that the, the 100 millimeter B3s are artillery pieces? Yeah, the Russians will turn anything that shoots a projectile into an artillery piece. I mean, that is true. Look at the AK-47 having a 1,000 meter range, and the way it works is the, the leaf thing basically turns your AK into an artillery piece. It turns it into a spray and fray at a kilometer. Yeah, the, the, you're never going to do it. It's, it's not going to work. Don't try it. <laughs> it's very optimistic. Yes. <laughs> Fully automatic volley fire. What's even more optimistic is the fact that these B3s might actually be able to make it into their battery location. Yeah, it's because the 152 suppressed all the infantry in the trees. <laughs> oh my god, what am I watching? <laughs> I If the game doesn't end before, then the Neverwaffers will for sure take him out. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, the, the B... Uh, J87 D3 pinned uh no it didn't even do any damage but it oh oh one of them is almost dead but those two t 3485s on the hill yeah that's the power there of the geo 87 but then it's also the power of having an a piece to counter counteract clusters yeah 
So the J-87's mm-hmm. clusters already go in a really wide arc. Um, well, wide is in a, it's a very large rectangle, right? So when yep. that 37 mil is actually doing, like, damage or suppression to the J-87, it, it makes that nice, perfect German rectangle into, like, a clusterfuck of an oval. So... <laughs> Normally, whatever's in the rectangle dies, but the oval, it's kind of like 50-50 if you live or you die. Yeah, it kind of tr- it tries its best to turn it into a box. All right, is this stug going to take out its thing? Nope, nope, it's dead. It was uh, stroking out there for some reason. Yeah, I think it was uh, trying to determine which one of the two T-34s to engage with the lower suppression, but neither of them are actually lower, so it just decided to, like, not shoot for some reason. Yeah, it pulled a Mitch McConnell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it just choked. Yeah, I just start stared. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, the total man. <laughs> the B3s are still alive. I think they'll uh, make it through to the end, because that's an endangered species right there. You don't see those a ton. No, you really don't. They are beautiful models. Yeah, though. they are really cool. And they fucking destroy whatever they hit. Those dudes manning that thing, to be able to push that big-ass gun, they got some calves and some glutes. There's a lot of ass behind those communists. Yep, and then, wait, I just realized something. The AP shell does 10 damage. It kills a medium tank in one shell. Yep. Wow. Yeah, it's it's like a 152 gun. Oh my god, the Sturm Skiager are getting fucking wrecked! (laughs) We got 14 seconds left to watch this firing squad. Oh my god! (laughs) <laughs> a little bit of overkill there it's like it's like a volley fire you know from like an old british battleship it's like just the the cascading volley fire at that point that ski Jaeger squad's gonna definitely have a bunch of closed caskets oh. <laughs> yeah so i'd like to say great game to both players um like nilla was saying psilocybin if you are watching this is not the voices in the walls or the sink um but instead just try to try out that platoon structure um nilla you can talk real quick about what you recommend for both players yeah so <clears throat> red bull the only thing that you need to work on is just your aggression be more aggressive when you feel that you're trading well you probably are and take advantage of that and if you find resistance that you weren't expecting it's fine you can fall back reassess and then go from there and then for psilocybin just think about a structure of units doesn't have to be entirely like i said it could be something that works well for you but try to have something where your your units that you put in a certain area are there for a purpose rather than just to have units there yeah i think those are great closing comments also red bull i know i'm gonna hate saying this but ski Eger does get flying off maps and those flying off maps are fucking annoying because the amount of charges they get per aircraft so just look into that for next time you do your uh, Ski Jaeger deck. Why do you got to give everybody the forbidden fruit? Oh, it's just so low hanging. Um, <laughs> so if you guys uh, have made it here this long, please like, comment, subscribe, whatever. It helps grow the channel. I recently hit 101 subs. So thank you all for everyone who stay around and watch. And it means the world to me that you even sub. With that, I'd like to say thank you again. And also, um, this is a Squire Joust tournament match, so Discord's below for Hobo Tango's Kingdom of the Noobs. Go join it. It's a different. It's different than SDL. It's also fun. Uh, with that, any closing comments, Nilla? Uh, Broken Arrow soon. Ooh, I can't wait to start casting Broken Arrow with you. Broken Arrow soon. Ooh, yeah, a- an actual Cold War game that's n- not gonna be broken on release not even cold war it's like it's postmodern. oh it is postmodern. that's right i'm just so used to the different cold war games Ooh, it's gonna be so fun all right and with that everyone thank you again for watching the cast have a good one bye bye